The meeting will come to order. Our guest chaplain today is Pastor James A. Terrence from Friendship Baptist Church. Would all who are able please stand for the invocation and then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor. Let us pray. Eternal God, again, we are privileged to gather to attend to the governance of the people. We do so against a backdrop of senseless and horrific violence. And as we gather, O oh Lord, we do so keenly aware of our own inadequacy, aware of our need for new strength, new courage, new ideas. We thank you for those who provide shelter for the homeless and those who attend to the needs of the poor. And today we pray for law enforcement, their families, their duty. Now bless these leaders today, and may they lead with discernment, wisdom, injustice, with fairness, and with humility. This is our prayer. And all of the people said, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. You probably knew in January. Oh, yeah. He died. I saw that picture. Yeah. Carl Davis. Look at you. You can have that one. Is that your right? Will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Here. Davis. Ike. Ford. Present. Johnson. Curls. Present. Reed. Present. Glover. Present. Marcuson. Present. Sarko. Present. Brooks excused. Taylor. Here. Sharp. Here. James. Here. Eleven eyes. <laughs> Will the clerk please call special actions? 130086, expressing sympathy on the death of Adele Coriel Hall. Councilman Glover. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I would like to request um, the clerk read this into the record, the full resolution, and then the council can have comments afterwards. I know I want to make brief comments. And then a moment of silence. The clerk will read the resolution. Whereas Kansas City civic leader and wife for nearly 60 years of Donald Hall, chairman of Hallmark Cards, was born Adele Coriel in 1931 in Lincoln, Nebraska. And whereas Adele devoted countless hours to numerous organizations, both locally and nationally, and had a special passion for health, education, and well-being of children. And whereas Adele held leadership position on boards of the United Negro College Fund, the Points of Light Foundation, American Academy of Pediatrics, Partnership for Children, the Miniger Foundation, Bush, George Bush Presidential Library Center, and the Library of Congress Trust Fund, among others. And whereas she was the first woman president of the Harvard, Heart of America United Way, was a board chairman of Children's Mercy Hospital, Greater Kansas City and Community Foundation, and served on the boards of Pembroke Hill School, Salvation Army, Starlight Theater, and the American Red Cross. And whereas in 1990, she was named the Kansas City of the Year, becoming the first woman to hold the title. And she was also named the kindest Kansas Cityan by the Stop Violence Coalition. And whereas Adele received numerous awards and honors for her community service, including the Chancellor Medal from the University of Missouri, Kansas City, Philanthropist of the Year from Kansas City Council on Philanthropy, the William Yates Trustee Medallion for the Distinguished Service from William Jewell College, and an honor honorary doctor of humane letters from the University of Nebraska. And whereas Adele has special place in the heart of Kansas City for Children's Mercy Hospital, where she rocked babies in the hospital or nursery, chaired board meetings, and led multi-million dollar fundraising campaigns. Whereas Adele spent her life serving others and was a loving wife, mother, and grandmother, and will be missed by all. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of Kansas City that the mayor and council hereby honor Adele Coriel Hall for her lifetime of service to Kansas City and beyond. 
and be it further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the minutes of the council and testimony thereof, and that copies hereof be presented to Adele Coriel's family in token of the sadness felt by the mayor, council, and citizens of the Kansas City on this occasion. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Glover. Mr. Mayor, this is a loss for Kansas City in the comments I'd like to make. There has been a lot written and should be written about Adele Hall, about her kindness, her modesty, her effervescent quality of being able to bring enthusiasm to everyone she met. Those were unique facets of her personality, but I need to add something else. She added to those a very substantial and incisive intellect. It's one thing to want to do good things. It's another thing to have the intellect, to be able to figure out how those good things should be done. She had that, and we benefited as a city by that. She can't be replaced. And I think that's a source of the grief of many people in our city is that she has died, but I was thinking about that last night. And my observation of Adele Hall was that she spent the time, at least I knew her and observed her, mentoring, encouraging, instructing, again, encouraging other people to do good things in this city. So a listing of the good things she did during her life does not fully tell her story. Her legacy is not just what she did in her life, but the people that she touched and encouraged and instructed to do good things in the future. Those good things have yet to be done. Their people are still doing it. So her true legacy has yet to be revealed because it's in the future. And that gave me some comfort that good things will still be done in Kansas City by people that Adele Hall touched, encouraged, and mentored. Her story is not over. It won't be over for generations because generations will be touched by her work, her example, and by the people that she motivated will pass it on, especially her family. Thank you, Councilman Glover. Councilwoman Serco. I think each one of us could, could, could go on and on about a personal story, um, but I think, and, and it's been stated in the news too, how humble she was. So I can remember the first time after I was elected to, uh, to be in a room with her where she came up to me and said, you're doing such a good job. I'm watching you, you're doing a good job. You need to keep it up. And, and to know that Adele Hall, who, who does so much, recognized some of the work that I have done was very humbling. So um, that was her personality. Nothing was about her or her status. It was about what was best for the greater community. And um, I will take that as a model to move forward. Thank you, Councilwoman Circle. Councilman Reed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we all have a sunset, uh, a sunrise, excuse me, and a sunset. And there's that dash in between that uh, is listed on each of the gravestones when everyone passes on. And it's really that dash that I think is reflective of what you do with it in between sunrise and sunset. I remember the first time I met Ms. Hall, I was probably about 16, 17 years old. And it was at, for a community fundraiser that we were holding for the Adi Group Against Crime. And she was uh, chairing the, the, the organization's big fundraiser, which was Alvin Brooks' 70th birthday party. And I remember it so well because she and her husband were in Hawaii, and they flew back to town uh, and made phone calls so that we could reach our goal for the organization. But the reason I mention this story briefly is because it really spoke to her commitment and her love for Kansas City for whatever she put her mind and heart to. And she did it with such a smile uh, and, and that commitment that she had, she was and will be forever remembered 
for her good deeds, her philanthropic efforts here in Kansas City as a true person who truly, truly loved uh, Kansas City. And so uh, today I add my voice in remembrance of that small dash that we have between our lives because although a person is gone, it's those memories that we have that continue to live on uh, each day. And we certainly have many, many memories and also dollars <laughs> to uh, remember all of the good work that uh, Adele Hall did while she was here on this earth. Thank you, Councilman Marie. Councilman Sharp. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, there are many folks who go through life and, and really never quite get around to giving back much. And then there, there's a smaller number that give back a little and sporadically and, and then stop and start again, stop. But there is a really pretty small number. That, that devote their whole life to, to giving back and, and helping others. And, and Mrs. Hall was, was one of these and, and did it throughout her life. She didn't retire from giving back. And I, I know just a few months ago when a, a group of us were meeting over at the chamber offices about efforts to improve how we care for lost and stray animals in, in Kansas City. Uh, she was right there at those meetings because uh, not only did she care about humans, she, she also cared very much about uh, our pets and domestic animals and, and treating them humanely. And we, we've seen some big improvements in our animal shelter, but I think we all know that it, it's still deficient. And uh, that was a concern to her and something that, that she devoted uh, a significant amount of her life to uh, as she in, in recent months. So people like her are very, very rare, too rare, and uh, I'm so glad uh, Councilman Glover asked that the whole resolution be uh, read into the record and that we have a moment of silence for her. Thank you, Councilman Sharp. Uh, Councilwoman Markison. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think uh, my colleague, Mr. Glover, really, um, I appreciate all his words, and I, I can't add too much, but I, I am reminded of a, of a verse from the Bible that says, unto whom much is given, much is expected. And uh, Adele Hall really lived out her, uh, her faith. I know she was a... Um, just, I, I have been involved with many, many of the projects that she uh, led, and she was a hard worker. And so it made you work hard because you thought, oh my goodness, if somebody who doesn't have to be doing any of this stuff, she could write a check and we could do it. But she got in there and did the, the work that isn't glamorous. Uh, and she was just a lovely, lovely person. And uh, the whole community is blessed by her, by her presence, what she leaves, her family, her children uh, will carry on with that role model. Uh, and we all will. And I just... Uh, we all owe the Hall family, and Adele in particular, a debt of gratitude, and uh, she will live on uh, in all of us and appreciate people from Hallmark being here and all that she has done uh, for the community, for the least of, of the community and for some very uh, important causes like the Nelson. So it, it was, she was, you couldn't pigeonhole her at all. She was just a beautiful person. Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Marcus and Councilwoman Curls. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, too, would like to rise uh, on behalf of Adele Hall and the Hall family. Uh, she was uh, kind-hearted. I've written down all these. The list got kind of long. Very sensitive, soft-spoken, with a kind smile, very philanthropic, and she'll be missed by all. I'll miss her saying, hi, Melba. When I, when I would go to an event, it seems like she was always there, and she would always say hi to me, and I... I'll miss that. So our prayers to the Hall family for a wonderful lady. Thank you, Thank you Councilwoman Curls. Any others? Well, I just want to say three things about Adele Hall, and I've known uh, Adele Hall for quite some time. Uh, started in the Kansas City Tomorrow program when I was practicing law as a youngster a long time ago. Um, but first, Adele Hall is the type of citizen that I pray for, not because she had money, not because she was all over the place doing all sorts of good things, but because she was a person who wanted to help anybody, regardless of color, race, creed, religion, socioeconomic 
status or anything else. She was a helper for all seasons. Number two, if Adele Hall were here, she would say, stop making this fuss about me. That wasn't who she was. She didn't like people making a fuss over. That's why she drove a car that most of us would like to trade in and get something better. Okay? Number three, the true, the true essence of Adele Hall will be in those people, and it will take more than one, who step into the void that she's left to do some of the things that she's done. She trained a lot of people who have that capacity. Now the question is going to be whether or not they step up. And I know that if she were here, she would tell them, you need to step up and fill these shoes so that this city that she loved can be the way that she wanted it to be and the way that she worked hard for it to be. Those are three things about Adele Hall that I think everybody can agree with, regardless of their contact with her. So with that being said, this resolution is now before the council. And I would move that, the re that this council and all present in the council accept this resolution by acclamation. All in favor? Aye. 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 The resolution is accepted by acclamation. Now, if you'll join with us, I'd like to ask that we recognize Adele Hall with a full minute of silence, because it should take that full minute for us to remember all the things that she's done. Thank you very much. The resolution is now available. Would you like to receive it? Next action. 130065, honoring Larry Stice as the original pay setter for January 2013. Mr. and Mrs. Stice are available here, are here to um, accept the special action. Councilman Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It is uh, always a great opportunity to talk about those who are doing great work in the city as well, and it's especially appropriate uh, after our last discussion um, on how people touch other people's lives, and certainly uh, in the capacity that Larry has had as one of our lead planners in the Development Management Division of City Planning, uh, he has touched a number of lives, uh, developing uh, projects across the city. Um, if we were to go through all of them uh, over his 26-year career, we would be here, how many? This says 26. <laughs> Feels like 26. Well, that's riches. <laughs> He's calling you old. <laughs> Apparently, this I was taken by the last <laughs> Well, Well, Mr. Mayor, uh, actually, he is about to retire, uh, so, uh, so maybe we all, we'll just add more years to you. I apologize, but at any rate... Um, Frankly, uh, he, he has been, a, been able to touch a lot of projects and a lot of lives and a lot of people in the city. What he has done uh, within his department is reflective on the number of them who are here today and what he has, uh, his, what he has meant to them. Um, but uh, I have been told uh, that uh, if, he, if he looks in the bottom, the fine print of the resolution he's going to receive, since he is the first original pay setter uh, to receive it upon... Uh, upon basically his retirement from the city. It should say that he actually has to stay an extra year or two, but, but, but perhaps I got erased in the last uh, iteration, I'm not sure. But at any rate, 
some of the things that was said about Larry include, uh, and I want to call a couple of those things out. Uh, he surrounds himself with knowledge at all times. He seeks to understand all points of view before reaching a conclusion regarding any issue. Those are things that are not good, not only in his capacity uh, in city planning, but for anyone who works for this city. It, it helps provide a good solution at any opportunity. And so uh, for that, Larry, thank you for what you have done. Uh, good luck to you on your future endeavors, and congratulations on being the January 2013 Rich Knoll Pace Center. Thank you very much, Councilman Wagner. I don't know who stood first, so I'm going to go with Councilwoman Markison. All right. Um, well, Larry, I just really want to thank you for all your hard work. You'd think the planning department wouldn't have as much drama, but Larry has been involved in some of the thorniest issues at City Hall and has done it with good humor, with competence, with uh, a really balanced approach to listening to both sides. And I don't know if it's just the fourth district, but um, we have thrown some uh, grenades your way and you have handled things very very well and we really appreciate it I know rich would be very very pleased that you were getting this award because you certainly have his the same can-do attitude uh, that rich has and um, I just you know I really hate that you're retiring so don't tell anybody what <laughs> following you what the job is really like because they may not uh, want to step into that but um, I know that with your um, mentoring the the department will uh, continue on with their great uh, service to our citizens, and we will miss you. So, but call me if you want to see any sprint tickets. <laughs> You're a constituent. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman Markson, Councilman Glover. Mr. Mayor, um, I have to say that there's always drama when anyone <laughs> advises the PZ and E Committee on development. <laughs> And uh, the good thing about your career, Larry, is that you were able to bring a balanced approach to a very volatile area um, and, and explore both sides and advise the committee well on those issues. Um, I thank you for your service. Thank you, Councilman Glover. Mayor Pro Tem. Larry, six years of planning and zoning, I, I have to be able to stand up and say something about you. And um, I can tell an observation that I have that professionalism definitely is a word described to you. We're not easy to work with. We all believe that we have training in planning, that we know the planning theory, we know planning history. And through our experiences, we develop some of that. But patience and tolerance really does have to be part of a planning staff person's personality. So we, we appreciate that. Um, I appreciate knowing uh, what you think um, and not just allowing us to, to, to sway wherever we want in the wind. So thank you for your professional advi advice at all times, your patience and your tolerance of us. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Mayor. I also stand to congratulate Larry. Uh, one of the whereas clauses says Larry is endlessly patient with citizens city staff and developers, and will spend as much time as needed with anyone who needs an explanation on how to complete a project. Well, he's also endlessly patient with city council members, <laughs> and, and we appreciate that. It's been referenced that you intend on retiring at the end of February. Uh, we've already told you that until Summit at Pryor is resolved, you can't. <laughs> It should be noted that he only gets the easy developments. <laughs> thank you, Councilman Ford. Councilman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, Larry, I want to say uh, thank you for a couple of reasons. One is I'm, as one of the uh, newer people on planning and zoning, I'm not on my fourth term like some of my uh, colleagues. Uh, <laughs> I've been very impressed with your, uh, not only your organization, your very uh, comprehensive reports every time you, have, you come in with an issue. I know that you've done your homework. Uh, but I think the, the best uh, compliment I, I could uh, mention to you right now is uh, mention to everybody is in, in talking with neighborhood leaders who sometimes are not in agreement with something that's being proposed. You have I've heard many times every time when your name comes up, you, you built that public trust because they know you're going to be fair. You're going to get information out there. And that's the, the highest compliment I think you can uh, take, take uh, with you that uh, our citizens uh, gave you that public trust because you earned it. And we really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councilman Taylor. Are there any others who would like to speak to the resolution? Hearing none, the resolution is now before the Council. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. There are no opposed. The resolution is passed. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you like you, now you get to talk. Okay. Tell them what you really think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, based on all that uh, wonderful testimony, what about that raise for the last month of my, uh, anyway, uh, my uh, nephew emailed me yesterday from Boston asking whether members of the public could attend today and speak in opposition to this resolution. <laughs> <laughs> but he's in Boston, he's not here, so I, I think I, can, I get to keep this today. Uh, it, this is special for me. Rich Knoll was a very good friend of mine. Uh, we drank an awful lot of beer together uh, a lot of times. And uh, uh, to be associated with his name via this award is very special to me. He's a one-of-a-kind one person. So I really do appreciate this. And uh, thank you to everyone in this room for making my job easier than you know. It was a very, it's a very wonderful job to have and I've uh, always enjoyed it. So thank you as well. Next action, please. 130066, honoring Detective John Cooley and Master Detective Michael Bailey for their valiant actions during an arrest of an armed fugitive on November 1, 2009. Both detectives are present to receive the special action. I just need to know, is Detective Cooley related to Officer Cooley? <laughs> you should have gotten an award for that alone. The kind shown out so much. She was fine. Councilman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's my uh, honor today to uh, once again recognize that we have the finest police force in the United States. We don't uh, have the opportunity to recognize individuals on a regular basis, uh, but when we do have an opportunity, we want to take advantage of it because uh, the uh, men and women in uniform in Kansas City put their lives on the line every day. Uh, they make a sacrifice. Their families make a sacrifice as well for our safety. and. Uh, it's, uh, in this case, uh, we have a couple of individuals here that uh, we felt like we had to recognize because of the, uh, the, the valiant effort that they uh, undertook. And this happened a while back, but there's a reason why, why they're here uh, today specifically. And uh, just real briefly, Master Detective Michael Bailey and Detective John Cooley are members of the FBI Violet Crime Safe Streets Task Force. Uh, they have uh, done a lot of good work to make our streets safer, but in one particular instance, they were uh, asked to uh, seek a violent fugitive uh, and arrest that person uh, based on uh, uh, some serious crimes committed, uh, knowing that this was an armed individual potentially. Well, the individual in question, I'm not going to uh, acknowledge the person's name because I don't want to recognize him, but uh, the, the individual in question uh, found out about the imminent arrest 
uh, was, was tipped off or, or something and uh, pulled out a gun in a public place, fired at the, uh, the resting team. And uh, the, the bravery, uh, while this happens every day in our city, our, our police officers are putting their lives on the line every day in any given situation. Uh, the, these individuals uh, arrested the suspect. No, nobody in the public was shot. Uh, every, and and uh, this, this person was put into custody and put away for a long time. Uh, the reason, though, that we want to recognize them is they are, uh, they've elevated Kansas City and, and law enforcement nationally as they were the first two members of the Kansas City Police Department in the history of the Kansas City Police Department to receive the uh, FBI Shield of Bravery Award. And last year, you may have heard uh, that they uh, were asked to uh, come to Washington, D.C. and actually receive that award personally from the director of the FBI. So I think uh, while they're very modest uh, and they, they do this on a daily basis, we, we have to recognize not only their effort, but the, but the effort of our, our men and women on a daily basis. So we thank you for your service, thank you for your sacrifice, and thank your, you. You have some family members here. We want to thank your family for their sacrifice as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Taylor. Are there any? Councilman Sharp. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, as you and I know from attending the uh, regular police board meetings, uh, we have many opportunities to uh, congratulate our officers for their heroic work. But I'm glad that we're doing that on this side of Locust today because I, I think we probably need to do that more. Uh, there are great acts of heroism uh, practically every day. Uh, by the members of our police department and and I think the police board does an excellent job of recognizing that but I think we can do a little more too and I'm so glad our colleague uh, Councilman Taylor led the way on this very appropriate recognition. Thank you Councilman Sharp. Are there others who wish to speak to the resolution? Well I would simply like to add that uh, what Councilman Taylor is cor uh, says is correct. We have excellent police officers in this city who do an outstanding job of protecting the public. Um, I'm glad to see that you were properly uh, recognized at the FBI. Um, I'm glad to see that you did exactly what you had been trained to do uh, and acted appropriately in the circumstances and that you did it so well that no one was harmed by the actions of some idiot with a gun. So thank you very much for that. If there's no others who wish to speak to the resolution, the resolution is now before the council. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. There are no opposed. The resolution is passed. You may both please feel free to address the council. Go on up there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, members of council. You've been in worse spots than this. <laughs> Out of time. Thank you, members of council. Um, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, uh, Federal Bureau of Investigations, and citizens of Kansas City for allowing me to represent you and serve and protect. Not big on speeches, but thank you. Thank you. I'm not a big public speaker either, but I want to quickly say thank you to my family first. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed that uh, there's a few uniforms up here. I have a large family, uh, and I'm part of a large family of law enforcement. I've got a retired father who's a Kansas City, a retired Kansas City uh, police officer. I've got two brothers that are Kansas City police officers. And I've got an aunt who is a former Kansas City police officer who's now with Blue Springs. So uh, I'm part of a, a big law enforcement family. I'm proud of that. Uh, most of them are here. One of my brothers was unable to be here because of uh, work. Um, I also want to thank uh, the executive board of the FOP who took the time to recognize the event that my partner and I uh, went through. Um, and they worked diligently to present it to the city council. And then I especially want to thank the city council for taking that information and doing this for us today and recognizing uh, what we went through and what we did. Uh, it's definitely a high point in my 22-year career. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you.
Congratulations. Thanks for your search. Thank you so much, Dad. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Thanks for coming down. Hi, thanks for coming down. I hear my. Okay, congratulations, Mom. How are you doing? Good, sir. Oh, you're the Blue Springs. Yes, yes the aunt. How are you doing? How long have you been retired? Thank you very much. Thank you to you and your family. I'm just getting to know Jason from the Northeast. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Hi, how are you? What a great family. Thank you. Hey, can you tell your brothers or what? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, think I, met, I think I've met them all now. You're welcome. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Good to see you. Congratulations on your great family. Some of those before I got elected to the city council. Yeah. Must be proud. Yeah, I see this. Okay, well, I'm telling you the Senate. I said, anybody wants to make a hike for tickets to go to the race? It says February 2nd, which is Saturday. It's well, I mean, if you're not, just give me just. Next action, please. 130073, honoring Dr. Sarita Graham for her many years of dedication to helping the homeless in the community. Dr. Graham and others are present to receive the special action. Oh, did he see it? It's on there on my desk in a folder. Did, you, did he see it? Yes. Dr. Graham. Dr. Graham. No, please do. <laughs> Councilman Reed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, today I rise to honor Dr. Sarita Graham for her many years of dedication to help le helping the homeless here in Kansas City. The prayer that uh, Pastor Terrence gave earlier today I think is so profound as this is the last person that we're recognizing today. But one of the things that Dr. Terrence talked about was praying for those who help homeless, and the least of these. And Dr. Graham, I believe, it embodies just that. Earlier today, I had an opportunity to join her and about 50 other Kansas Cityans and also a homeless man here in our community who uh, just opened Joshua Safe Haven, which provides a face-based, uh, family-focused living environment in use of combination of faith of God and supportive family inpatient and outpatient uh, aftercare treatment for recovery to support those with assistance in our community who need them. And this facility and her work for uh, she's committed to for the past 15 years is to be recognized today. And for that, I stand to uh, thank her for all of her help and all of her dedication to the uh, folks here in Kansas City who are the least of these, as Dr. Uh, Pastor Terrence prayed earlier for us. So, Thank you for all of your hard work and congratulations on opening up a new facility today. Thank you, Councilman Reed. Is there anyone else? Yep. You know, one thing, uh, we've heard this phrase, the least of, of us or these, and, and it's used in a number of places, and appropriately so, but my guess is, is that Dr. Graham never thought of anybody as the least of anything, because if you were thinking of somebody as the least or the less, it would be very hard to stay motivated to reach out and do the things that this remarkable woman has done in order to help people who have so little. If, if by least we mean that they are the least recognized, that they are the ones that we most often walk over without a thought, uh, the ones that we seldom uh, reach out to on our own, then that's probably true. But this woman, I believe, is probably uh, never thought of the least of anybody or she couldn't do what she's done. So I want to thank you for everything that you've done and the reaching out that you've done uh, because you've shown true Christianity in the big sense of the word, the ones that say treat others as you would like to be treated. And that's what you're being honored for. So if no others want to speak to the resolution, it's now before the council. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. There are no opposed. The resolution is passed. Please. I'm very honored today to come before great men and women, especially standing right beside the mayor, Mr. James. I, I am so grateful and honored for the resolution, and, and I thank you, Mr. Reed, for actually being present there 
and I thank you for Ms. Curls being able to let us know you weren't able, but you did give respect and say, hey, I'm not able to make it. I had uh, prior engagements, but I am so grateful for today. And again, thank you so much, and thank you for the council. And it, 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 it's been a really touching day for me because, um, you know, I, I lost my daughter. And, um, and I took that and said that I would give every homeless person an opportunity to live again and to have a second chance. And I serve that population, and, and I do it with the utmost, with, with the steerhead of God. And I, I'm grateful today. And I have the director of that facility also with me, Mr. Paul, and he'll say a few words. But I just want to say thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. This Good. is for you. Go ahead, yes. please. Good afternoon. I uh, have a job at, as director of Joshua Safe Haven. I call it another day at the Ponderosa. It's never a dull moment. You know, we work with homeless men. We work with men with alcohol, substance abuse problems. We also have a reentry program for the men coming out of the Department of Correction. And the one thing I understand that situation, eight years ago, I walked in their shoes. I went from playing professional basketball to the Department of Correction because of my addiction. But eight years ago, I made a decision, enough was enough. So I understand what they're going through. I was homeless. And uh, it's a very you know, rewarding situation where I have, and we do the best we can. And I just want to thank everyone here for giving us this time, giving Dr. Graham this point. And I also want to thank Councilman Reed for coming to our open house. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Before we move from special actions, I think it would be appropriate at this time to recognize that one of our former Kansas City, Missouri finance directors, John M. Urey, um, passed away this Monday, January the 28th, at the age of 91. Um, Mr. Urey uh, was a person who worked in this city as our finance director until he retired in December of 1987. And um, as we have been, and as th this council has been so good to recognize the good works of our current employees, uh, we also need from time to time to remember that our current employees are building on the work in the backs of our past employees, and this one is one of them. So with that being said, if we could ask for a moment of silence in honor of a past colleague, uh, that would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. Now, will the clerk please call the communications? 130080, accepting and releasing various easement and deeds in Kansas City, Clay County, Missouri, and requesting that the city manager approve the acceptance and release. Received and filed. 130082, accepting various easement and deeds in Kansas City, Jacqueline County, Missouri, and requesting that the city manager approve the acceptance. Received and filed. 130085, notice of the city clerk from Hush Blackwell regarding the submission of the proposed budget for fiscal year 18, um, 2014 for Martin City Community Improvement District. Received and filed. 130087, notice of the city clerk from Hush Blackwell regarding the submission of the proposed budget for fiscal year ending April 30, 2014 for the 39th Street Community Improvement District. Received and filed. 130088. 
Emergency Regulations E41559 through 561. Received and filed. Will the clerk please proceed with resolutions requesting adoption? 121049, amending the Plaza Urban Design and Development Plan for the future development and redevelopment of about 1.8 acres, generally located on the east side of Bellevue Avenue, about 200 feet north of 40. 8th Street to recommend limited redevelopment as, with specific guidelines instead of limited redevelopment with existing zone. Planning Zoning Committee recommends do pass. Thank you. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, we'll later have on the docket two ordinances at our companion. Uh, in the first phase of redevelopment, a 1,750-foot uh, square foot addition to the north side of the Paddock Place building will house a, a new bank with uh, three drive through lanes. Uh, the second phase of development expands on an existing uh, uh, parking garage. Planning, Zoning, Economic Development Committee has reviewed this resolution, recommends immediate adoption. Thank you, Councilman Ford. Are there any other who want to discuss this matter? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Pearl. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Bill Weiss. The resolution is passed. 130089, approving appointing successors, directors, successor directors to the Red Bridge Community Improvement District. This is a resolution uh, basically uh, setting up a process within the Planning and Zoning and Economic Development Committee uh, to have a little bit more input regarding the selection of uh, successor um, uh, directors in the Red Bridge Community Improvement District, and I believe will be applied equally to other improvement districts as successor directors are needed. And it is um, relatively harmless from what I can see. We are to be presented with a slate and then to make decisions based on that slate. And if we fail to act, then the successors will be appointed internally. Is that basically correct, Councilman Ford? Yes. Thank you. Very correct. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman Ford. Are there any others who wish to speak to this resolution? Councilman Sharp. Well, as I understand this resolution, this just approves the directors, right? Okay. The successor. It's successor directors in the CID, but also it adds a little bit to the process of approving in that there is a slate to be presented and that it will go through the Planning and Zoning Committee, correct? Councilman Sharp? This, this resolution addresses that. Thank you. We have received a uh, communication uh, which was then sent to Planning and Zoning Economic Development, and the past practice had been that under the state statute uh, there was a default to the, uh, the uh, successor directors if, if the, the mayor did not act by resolution. Right. Uh, this appoints the same persons who would have been appointed by default, but it, it's a more proactive way of dealing with our CIDs. Right. Anything else, Councilman Sharp? Well, this resolution itself, though, doesn't uh, um, deal with the process, so. Oh, the state statute deals with the right. process. Oh. All right. Thank you, Councilman Sharp. Are there any, is there any other discussion? If not, will the clerk please call the roll on the resolution? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcuson. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Twelve ayes. The resolution is passed. Will the clerk please proceed with the third reading's debate docket? One two one zero five two rezoning a forty acre tract of land generally located on the north side of East Seventy Fifth Street, approximately a half mile west of Nolan Road, from District R eighty to District Seven Point Five. Planning Zoning Committee recommends to pass. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, this is a rezoning ordinance uh, of a, I believe it's forty acres. Uh, this is an area that sits kind of toward the the edge of the border with Lee Summit, as I understand it. Raytown, and it's an area that has been expanding outside the city limits. So it's an opportunity for Kansas City to um, take advantage and with, with the rezoning uh, perhaps gain some more population in southern Jackson County, Kansas City. Thank you, Councilman Ford. Is there any further discussion? If not, will the clerk please call the roll on the ordinance? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Pearls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. 
Aye. Markerson? Aye. Sarko? Aye. Brooks? Taylor? Aye. Sharp? Aye. James? Aye. 12 ayes. The ordinance is passed. Councilwoman Markerson. Yes, Honorable Mayor. I move that the charter requirements for reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived for the ordinances on today's docket listed as scheduled committee advances and that these ordinances be advanced for final reading and consideration at this time. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the charter requirement for reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived and that the ordinances on today's docket listed as scheduled committee advances be advanced for final reading and consideration at this time. Is there any discussion on that motion? Hearing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Markison. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. 12 ayes. The ordinance is passed. Will the clerk please proceed with the advanced debate docket? 121020, amending chapters 2 and 68 code of ordinances by repealing sections 2, 1992, budget transfers, and section 68, 446, sales tax, and enacting in lieu thereof new sections of like number and subject matter. Finance Committee recommends to pass. Councilwoman Marcus. Yes, thank you, Mayor. The Finance, Governance, and Ethics Committee has reviewed this and recommends to pass. This was first suggested by uh, the Transportation and Infra Infrastructure Chair uh, regarding uh, a more effective way, an efficient way to manage our PIAC project projects when they span different departments. Sometimes Water and Public Works is working on one project that's been approved by the by a committee and by the council, um, but money needs to be transferred from one department to another, and uh, oftentimes the T&I committee would be getting these uh, ordinances and really it was a project that was approved it was it was a way for departments to work better together and uh, to do things more seamlessly and so uh, it, it took some revisions and we have come up with a good process I believe and the Finance Committee recommends to pass thank you Councilwoman Markson is there any further discussion if there's no further discussion will the clerk please call the roll Wagner aye Davis aye Ford Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curl. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Twelve eyes. The ordinance is passed. 130044, amending various tax provisions of chapters 40, 50, and 68 in connection with the implementation of the city's new tax administration software system. Finance Committee recommends do pass. Councilwoman Marcus. Thank you, Mayor. The Finance, Governance, and Ethics Committee has reviewed this and recommends to pass. And it was kind of interesting. Uh, not too often do we spend a lot of time talking about software upgrades. <laughs> but this, uh, our, our Director of uh, Commissioner of Revenue spent quite a bit of time telling us all the ways that this new software system that our Finance Department is installing uh, will make it easier to do business in Kansas City. And uh, the Small Business Committee and Councilman Taylor uh, uh, was very, this was one of their priorities, and so I think as we've ticked down that list of 67 uh, eff efforts we're going to do to make Kansas, this is just one more, and it, we're getting close to the end, but it really was good to hear uh, the staff talk about ways we are utilizing technology to make it easier for our uh, collections to be done, for people to apply for different things, and to uh, just streamline our processes, and to look at our processes to make sure they're appropriate, and then to use software to uh, carry those out. So uh, we spent quite a bit of time on software, uh, and it was, a, it was good use of time. So I think the public, if they are interested in seeing ways, they can watch the Finance and Governance Committee meeting this week and learn a lot about how we are improving our processes. Thank you, Councilwoman Markison. Councilman Taylor. Mr. Mayor, I want to uh, thank uh, Councilwoman Markison for her leadership on this because it has been, uh, along with staff, a, a long road to get to this point. Uh, but we did hear, I think uh, I can speak for my colleagues on the Small Business Committee, uh, from many uh, businesses who would like to do more things online. And so this is the first step uh, making this revenue uh, department uh, uh, implement, Im implementation, but this is just the first step. We have a much broader uh, upgrade across all departments so that we can get the data from all our departments uh, talking. This is also consistent with your efficiency effort through KC Stats. So I think it's all coming together. I'm pleased at the progress. This is, uh, for the record, one of the five items we have not implemented because we actually, the goal was implementation. So we're taking a step towards that. 
but we're not there yet. Uh, but we have uh, uh, 62 uh, out of 67. So this, once this is in place, it will be 63 out of 67 done. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Taylor. Is there any further discussion? If not, will the clerk please call the roll on the ordinance? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Circo. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Well, advise. The ordinance is passed. 130049, authorizing directing the issue and sale and delivery of not to exceed $54 million principal amount of water revenue bonds, series 2013A, of the City of Kansas City, Missouri, prescribing the form and details of such revenue bonds, authorizing certain actions and documents, and prescribing other matters relating thereto. Finance Committee recommends to pass. Councilwoman Markinson. Thank you, Mayor. The Finance, Governance, and Ethics Committee has reviewed this and recommends to pass. This is the sale of water bonds to, um, again, improve to provide for the uh, improvements in the treatment and distribution of our water. And um, uh, we're getting more and more of these projects out the door, and we want to remind people it's because we um, have made the uh, commitment to having these improvements done. This is, we're getting closer to the complete uh, sale of all the bonds that were authorized in 2005. I think we have 50 million more. But um, because we did not have the reserves we need to pay the debt on the bonds, you know, it has been a slow process. But because we did the responsible thing and looked at our water rates and now have a better uh, funding structure for these improvements, we are able to move forward. So I think all of us will see um, the uh, results of this. So we're very pleased to um, have this before us, and we recommend do pass. Thank you, Councilwoman Markison. Is there any further discussion? If not, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Lover. Aye. Markison. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Twelve ayes. The ordinance is passed. 130055, enacting a new Chapter 2, Article 6, Division 17, to codify the establishment of the Ethnic Enrichment Commission. Finance Committee re recommends to pass. Uh, Councilwoman Marcuson. Thank you, Mayor. The Finance, Governance, and Ethics Committee has reviewed this and recommends to pass. And again, it was one of these, uh, an ordinance that we spent some time on, which was, again, well spent. Uh, I think the thing that stood out to me, there was no fewer than 80 members of this commission, and we were w looking at Ms. Handy and saying, that's a, that's a big job. But apparently, the commission is uh, on board, and they will do what it takes to get this uh, Ethnic Enrichment Commission uh, in place, and they, they're, they're uh, very um, committed to looking at our community and making sure that we're fully aware of the rich history and the rich um, uh, distribution of, of uh, countries that live and work and uh, enjoy Kansas City. And so we spent some time talking about the Ethnic Enrichment Festival, which is the third Saturday, third weekend in August, August the weekend of August 16th uh, in Swope Park. And I hope everyone comes out and enjoys that. Thank you very much, Councilman Markison, and you're right. It is a huge commission, but they take on a pretty big job, and they do a very good job of exposing the city to various ethnic groups and foods and things of that nature in the city, and that's a good thing for us to be, have exposure to. If there's no further discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Circo. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. James. Aye. Eleven eyes. The ordinance is passed. 121054, resulting in an area of approximately 1.8 acres generally located on the east side of Bellevue Avenue, about 200 feet north of West 48th Street from District R1.5 to District MPD, and improving a <coughs> preliminary development plan. Planning Zoning Committee recommends to pass. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, this is the uh, companion rezoning ordinance on the uh, uh, the Plaza Bank project we previously voted on in the resolution. Planning, Zoning, Economic Development Committee has reviewed this ordinance. Recommends to pass. Thank you, Councilman Ford. Is there any further discussion? If not, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Eleven ayes. The ordinance is passed. 
One two um, one three zero zero one one vacating a portion of the north south alley east of Bellevue Avenue, north of West Forty Eighth Street, Kansas City, Jackson County, Missouri, retaining the utility easement and directing the city clerk to record certain documents. Plain zoning committee recommends you pass. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, this is the companion ordinance on the alley vacation. Uh, Planning Zoning Economic Development Committee has reviewed it, recommends due pass. Thank you, Councilman Ford. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Markson. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. 11 ayes. The ordinance is passed. 130057, authorizing Director of H H Neighborhood and Housing Services Department to execute a necessary documents or agreements with the Jazz D District Redevelopment Corporation to purpose three properties comprising of the Christmas Attic School and adjoining property generally located in the southeast corner of 18th and Woodland, all in Kansas City, Missouri, appropriating 150000 from the unappropriated fund balance of the HUD Section 108 loan fund to be used for the purchase of the property and designate requisition and authority plane. Zoning Committee recommends you pass. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, the city is preserving its ongoing investment in the future development of the 18th and Vine Jazz District through the purchase of the attic school and the adjoining properties. This action will enable the city to stabilize its investment in the district and ensure development of the school, which is designated as a historic property on the National Register of Historic Places and is included as part of the locally designated 18th and Vine Historic District. The purchase of the property will further assist the Jazz District Redevelopment Corporation by retiring an outstanding debt in the amount of $137,422.48 O2 uh, LISC, which is currently holding the attic school as collateral for the loan. Planning Zoning Economic Development Committee has reviewed this ordinance re recommends to pass. Thank you, Councilman Ford. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? I'm sorry. Didn't see you there, Councilman Reed. Councilman Reed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just like to rise. Uh, Councilman Ford did a good job explaining the details about this purchase. Uh, that attic school has been vacant for quite some time, and this purchase will allow for us to uh, start with some of the important things that need to get done in terms of redevelopment in the area of 18th and Vine, uh, especially with that building that's been vacant for over, I, I believe, 15 years. Uh, and so this purchase is extremely important and uh, would encourage my colleagues to, to vote on it. Thank you, Councilman Reed. Council, um, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Councilman Ford pointed this out, but I haven't heard it yet, that um, there's a lot of times that we are asked to assist in a development, and, and many of the developments um, are, almost all of the developments that um, these kinds of dollars are used for are difficult. But our history shows us when we're putting money in that if the, the developer can't complete the pod project, then we are on the hook for making sure HUD receives these dollars back. What staff did with these particular dollars were um, also create deliverables in this contract. So if for some reason, which we have no um, thought that that's, this will happen, but it is a very smart practice to continue going forward, with these dollars that are, are an advantage to the developer, we get those deliverables back. We get architect plans, we get engineering plans, we get whatever those dollars are buying belong to the city so that we can then go forward with that project no matter uh, what happens um, in the future. Um, all expectations are everything will go fine, but this is a practice that we want to see staff continue to use again and again as we um, are the facilitators of these dollars that we receive deliverables back for them. Thank you, Councilwoman Turco. Is there any further discussion? If not, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcuson. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Bill Vice. The ordinance is passed. 130064, appropriating 250000 in the Community Development Block Grant Fund for the Colonnades Project at Beacon Hill, and authorizing Director of Neighborhood and Housing Services to execute that same amount for the contract and corresponding loan documents with Colonnades at Beacon Hill. Planning and Zoning Committee recommends to pass. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, this is one of the moving parts in the redevelopment of the Beacon Hill Project, and specifically, uh, this one deals with the, the Colonnades. Uh, this authorizes the Director of Neighborhoods and Housing Services to enter into a pre-development loan contract uh, of $250,000 uh, using CDBG money. Planning Zoning Economic Development Committee has reviewed the ordinance and recommends to pass. Thank you, Councilman Ford. Is there any further discussion? 
Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcuson. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. 12 ayes. The ordinance is passed. 130056, amending Chapter 20, Code of Ordinances Relating to Cigarettes by Repealing Sections 20. Dash eight concerning the issuance, suspension, and revocation of the cigarette license, and enacting in its place a new section of like number and subject matter, uh, repealing sections eighteen concerning penalties for violating cigarette licensing provisions, and enacting in its place a new section of like number and subject matter, and enacting a new section nineteen authorizing the manager of regulated industries to assist the commissioner of revenue with the enforcement of cigarette license requirements. Public safety committee recommends to pass. Councilman Sharp. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, as we discussed in business session, uh, we've had no real mechanism to enforce uh, our ordinances or state laws uh, prohibiting the sale of tobacco products to uh, underage uh, young adult, well, not young adults, to underage people for some time. And uh, the uh, Division of Regulated Industries, the Office of Regulated Industries did uh, send out testers. Uh, they made basically a uh, hundred attempts uh, to allow these underage testers to purchase cigarettes. They actually made 99, and in 56 of those cases, they were successful. So uh, there, there clearly is a, an enforcement problem, and there is also uh, a problem with how our ordinances were drafted. So uh, this ordinance that was sponsored uh, by Councilman Wagner and me and came out of the work of the Gateway Crimes Task Force that Councilman Wagner heads, uh, does strengthen our ordinances to provide, uh, among other things, that if you sell tobacco products, products, any tobacco products, uh, but most of these sales are cigarettes or rolling papers, uh, to uh, persons under 18, uh, you can face uh, suspension or, or revocation of your cigarette license. Also, if you have sold uh, uh, controlled substances or imita imitation controlled substances, you face the same penalties. We also added a new section authorizing the uh, manager of regulated industries to uh, assist in the enforcement of this and uh, allowed uh, that office to do the inspections of these facilities just as they do on uh, enforcing the uh, state and city ordinances against the sale of alcoholic beverages to underage persons. And that has proved to be very effective. Uh, so that office uh, uh, can uh, send out testers to make sure the laws are being followed and the office is empowered uh, when, the, when there are violations that are found to uh, uh, have informal uh, dispositions of those violations so we, we don't end up having to go through a time-consuming uh, hearing process in almost all cases, but uh, the uh, violators would have to admit that uh, the law was violated and then face either uh, an assessment to recover the costs of the investigation to keep this uh, process going and or a suspension of their uh, cigarette license for a period of days. So all we're seeking is for businesses to be good businesses and to enforce state and city laws and not sell cigarettes, other tobacco products, or rolling papers to kids. Uh, they have to be 18 to legally purchase them. We expect that law to be followed just as we expect the laws to be followed on sale of alcoholic beverages. And I would suggest uh, to those businesses who, who may think, uh, well, this isn't serious or let's see what happens, it's not going to be a question of if. It's just a question of when. We will have a tester go there so uh, they would be well advised to start following the law today. Thank you, Councilman Sharp. Councilman Wagner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to thank uh, my colleague, Councilman Sharp, who uh, serves with me on the uh, Gateway Crimes Task Force as well as, as his role as Chairman of, of Public Safety uh, in, in, in helping me uh, and working with, with all of us to get this uh, to the point we have today. Um, just a couple of things that I want to add. One is we have seen the efficacy of what we have with alcoholic beverages, and there is really no reason why uh, this won't work on a number of different levels 
but I think the message is very clear uh, to us as a regulated industries did its testing uh, that we have a significant problem as it relates to uh, selling to underage uh, youth uh, these tobacco products. And uh, as soon as this becomes effective, we have the opportunity to make a real dent uh, in that particular issue. And I expect uh, that uh, that will be felt very quickly across uh, the entire landscape. But I also just want to point out, um, because of the way uh, we, we deal with this issue in terms of cigarette licensing and enforcement, uh, that uh, this really has to be a team effort, and it has been a team effort. Uh, as we've worked with the Revenue Department, as we've worked with regulated industries, as we've worked with the Police Department, um, Mayor's Office, City Manager's Office, Council, the, the whole nine yards, uh, this, what some may consider a little issue, touches a variety of places, and they've all come together. Um, as we have gone through this issue, uh, and especially as we've worked with the Revenue Department, we've uncovered other things that we need to, to work on and change, and so um, that, that will be coming uh, probably sooner rather than later, as, as Councilwoman Markison and I uh, discussed it earlier today. Um, but this is uh, also, I think, one of those times, and, and we have tried to make them on a more regular basis, where we have uncovered things that may have been written in ordinance <laughs> decades ago, but in order for them to be effective now, we have to go back and rework those processes and find a way to make what the um, what the idea and the outcome was those decades ago work for us today. And and this is, uh, and, and I'm very thankful that this is another one of those instances where we're making that happen, uh, and we will make them happen again very very soon. But I just want to thank everyone. Uh, who has been involved, and thank uh, sp specifically Councilman Sharp, Councilwoman Markison, in this case, in helping us put together something that we think is going to work very, very well. Thank you, thank, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Wagner. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Ron. Johnson. Aye. Curl. Aye. Reed. Aye. Lover. Aye. Markison. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. 12 ayes. The ordinance is passed. Mayor Pro Tem. Honorable Mayor, I move that the charter requirement for readings of ordinances on three separate days be waived for the ordinances on today's docket listed as second readings, and that they be placed in the docket next week for third reading. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded that the charter requirement for reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived for ordinances on today's docket listed as second readings, and that they be placed on the docket next week for third reading. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion on the motion, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Of ayes. The motion is passed. Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Honorable Mayor, I move that the charter requirements for reading ordinances on three separate okay. days be waived for the ordinances on today's docket That's listed as first you. readings, and that these ordinances be introduced as listed to the committee so designated. Second. 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 It's been moved and seconded that the charter requirement for reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived for the ordinances on today's docket listed as first readings, and that these ordinances be introduced as listed to the committee so designated. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion on the motion, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Markison. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Well, aye. The motion is passed. Councilwoman Marcus. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I request that the clerk receive docket and read an ordinance prepared too late to be on today's docket. The clerk will receive the ordinance, assign a number, and read the title. That ordinance number is going to be 130093, authorizing the execution of a, co a correction special warranty deed from Truman Medical Center to correct the legal description of a special warranty deed filed with the Jackson County, Missouri Recorder of Deeds on August 27, 2012, as instrument number 2012E0091721. Councilwoman Markison. Thank you. I move that the charter requirement for the reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived and this ordinance be advanced for final consideration today. Second. 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 It's, it's been moved and seconded that the charter requirement for reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived and that this ordinance be advanced for final consideration at this time. Is there any discussion on that motion? 
If there's no discussion on the motion, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Markson. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Aye. Full eyes. The motion has passed. The ordinance is now before the council for final consideration. Is there any discussion, Councilwoman Marcus? This is just a correction in the legal description of an ordinance we've already passed, so it's just a um, clean-up ordinance. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? If not, will the clerk please call the roll on the ordinance itself? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Pearl. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcuson. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Taylor? Aye. Sharp? Aye. James? Aye. 12 ayes. The ordinance is passed. Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last week at uh, committee chair's meeting, I passed out a draft of the resolution that everybody has on their desk today. And after that meeting, based on comments from your office and others, that list of organizations on it was revised. However, it, one, of, one of the organizations that was on the original list is now gone, and I don't know why. <laughs> So I, I would, instead of introducing something that is not accurate to the public, I am not going to introduce this resolution this week. I'll introduce it next week. Thank you, Councilman Johnson. However, is it possible that we can simply correct it by interlineation? Well, we'd have to probably explain how it was originally emitted, and it is an honest mistake. I'd rather get it right the first time. All right, sir. Is there anything further to come before the body? A councilman Ford. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, I just wanted to congratulate our colleague, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Cindy Serco, on receiving uh, a nice recognition this week of being one of the 30 most influential uh, women in Kansas City. We knew something was up when she wore a new outfit to planning and zoning. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Councilman Ford. Councilman Wagner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Although they have left, so they cannot hear the accolades, but we were joined by the uh, Engage KC students. Uh, this afternoon, I had the opportunity to spend part of my last Saturday with them, with them to uh, uh, speak to them about uh, ordinances and uh, what they are and how they are passed. And so I'm hopeful that uh, they got to see everything kind of happen this afternoon. But just wanted to recognize them since they were here. Thank you very much, Councilman Wagner. Is there anything further come before the body? If not, if there is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor.